Today, we are in for a continuation on the jewels of Maria of Tech. In this video, you will only see tiaras, although the queen had a plethora of adornments. I want to congratulate you all. You are very attentive viewers and spotted the trick in the previous video. If you enjoyed such tests, do let us know in the comments. Now let's delve into the magnificent tiara known as Honeysuckle. The origin of this tiara remained shrouded in mystery for many years. There was a belief that the ornament had ties to the Russian Empress Maria Feodorovna. The design of the piece remarkably resembles the Romanov tiaras in the Kokoshnik style. However, the Honeysuckle tiara was actually crafted for Queen Maria shortly after her husband George ascended to the British throne. This classic piece was created by E. Wolfe and company under the commission of the court jeweler Garrod. Initially, the tiara featured a taller centerpiece, but upon the owner's directive, it was shortened to its current design. Adorned with motifs of honeysuckle, encrusted with diamonds, the tiara is embellished with several different precious stones. In the center of the tiara, one could find the Cullinan V diamond, a sapphire and diamond brooch, as well as an alternating pink kunzite and diamond brooch. It's worth noting that kunzite was discovered 10 years prior to the creation of the Gloucester Honeysuckle Tiara and was an exclusive gem in the jewelry trade of that time. The tiara also incorporated repurposed royal diamonds sourced from the Surrey County Tiara, which was dismantled. Queen Maria was captured wearing the tiara in two variations, with the Cullinan V diamond in 1914 and with the sapphire brooch in the 1920s. Yet something about the tiara still troubled Queen Maria. Not out of ill will, she graciously gifted a new splendid diadem to her daughter-in-law, Lady Alice Montague Douglas Scott, the wife of Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester. However, the dear mother-in-law's gift bore a more modest appearance compared to the original. Instead of exquisite interchangeable elements, the centerpiece of the tiara was adorned with a diamond honeysuckle, harmonizing with the wreath motifs. Neither the Cullinan V diamond nor the sapphire, nor the kunzite, were part of the wedding gift. The heart-shaped diamond from the depths of South Africa was inherited by Queen Elizabeth Bowes Lyon. The sapphire brooch was gifted to Princess Margaret, and the pink kunzite was united with the tiara after Maria's death in 1953. Upon the suggestion of Alice, Duchess of Gloucester, the sapphire brooch was replaced with an emerald cabochon adornment. The Duchess of Gloucester first adorned herself with the gift from Queen Maria shortly after her wedding at the coronation of King George VI in 1937. This very jewel complemented Alice's attire in several official portraits and numerous social events. The honeysuckle tiara became an indispensable companion to the Duchess during her husband's tenure as the Governor General of Australia from 1945 to 1947. Eventually, Princess Alice gifted the tiara to her daughter-in-law, Birgitta, the current Duchess of Gloucester, who has been using the adornment in all its forms for several decades. The most luxurious tiara in my view is known as the Countess of Love. In 1913, Queen Maria of Tech commissioned the jewellery company Garrard & Company to create a new tiara based on the design of the Cambridge Lover's Knot tiara. The original tiara belonged to her maternal grandmother, Princess Augusta of Hesse Castle, Duchess of Cambridge, and later passed to her aunt, Princess Augusta of Cambridge, Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz This tiara, let's refer to it as the original, was created in 1818. Princess Augusta of Hesse Castle's parents gifted it to her in honor of her marriage to Prince Adolphus Frederick, Duke of Cambridge, the seventh son of King George III. Augusta and Adolphus Frederick had three children, an eldest son, George, and two daughters, Augusta and Maria. The Cambridge tiara then passed through inheritance to the eldest daughter, Augusta, later the Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz The current ownership of the original tiara is unknown. In 1838, during the coronation of Queen Victoria at Westminster Abbey, the Duchess of Cambridge wore this tiara, Cambridge Lovers Knot. It features 19 diamond arches, within which dangle 19 pearls and 19 diamond spikes at the top of the tiara. Initially, pearls were meant to sit atop the tiara, as was the case with the original, but Queen Maria ultimately removed the top pearls. She passed away in 1953, and the tiara was inherited by her eldest granddaughter, Elizabeth II, who ascended to the throne in 1952. 
1981, the Cambridge tiara was gifted by Elizabeth II to Diana, Princess of Wales, as a wedding gift. After her divorce from the Prince of Wales, the tiara was returned to the Queen. This tiara was one of Diana's most beloved jewels. Nowadays, Catherine wears this tiara. Now our next heroine is the little-known tiara called the Diamond Lozenge. Maria of Teck debuted it in 1935 at the premiere of the film Ghost Goes West at Leicester Square. The tiara, shaped like a kokoschnik, was adorned with a diamond lozenge pattern and crowned with 13 pearl spikes. However, by 1946, Queen Maria had removed the pearls. Among admirers of royal jewelry, there's a theory that the pearls Queen Maria used atop the diamond bandeau are identical to the pearls on the Lover's Knot tiara. This speculation holds weight as the number of pearls matches, and the pearl attachments in both cases are detachable. Queen Maria valued jewelry for their ability to undergo subtle transformations. A decade later, the Queen of Britain lent the tiara without pearls to her granddaughter, Princess Margaret. The princess, who had just turned 18, was headed to the Netherlands for the inauguration of Queen Juliana in September 1948. It was Margaret's first official event representing her father, King George VI, and Queen Elizabeth. According to tradition, monarchs do not attend each other's inaugurations, delegating these duties to their heirs. As Princess Elizabeth was pregnant with Prince Charles, the honor of representing Britain fell to Princess Margaret. The diamond lozenge tiara was used by Margaret several times. In 1950, during the state visit of Queen Juliana and Prince Bernhard to Britain. In 1965, at one of the state receptions, Queen Maria's diamond bandeau adorned Princess Margaret for the last time. For over half a century, the tiara has not been presented to the public. It is genuinely unknown whether this diadem still exists, whether it belongs to the Royal Jewel Vault, or if Princess Margaret sold it at an auction. The possibility of Princess Margaret secretly selling the diamond lozenge tiara, strange as it may seem at first glance, cannot be ruled out. The rebellious princess was notorious for her scandalous behavior, frequenting London's entertainment clubs. Numerous affairs and parties could have led to debts that needed discreet handling, requiring finances. So, the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, as she called herself the embodiment of evil and corruption, the Queen of the Night, might have engaged in a clandestine deal. What do you think happened to the tiara? But one of the most mysterious tiaras in 1925 was when Maria of Teck added to her collection the diamond bandeau from the masters at Garrard. It was a sizable adornment with an intricate pattern that, in my opinion, looked splendid in an elaborate hairstyle. Princess Alexandra wore it in such a manner, a magnificent example of youth combined with the delicate sparkle of transparent stones. However, the Queen did not leave the adornment untouched and instructed jewellers to add fittings for drop-shaped Cambridge emeralds. The green crystals undoubtedly added luxury to the tiara but failed to make it more appealing to Maria. She wore the tiara only a few times and eventually forgot about its existence altogether. According to the will, the tiara passed on to the Queen's daughter-in-law, the Duchess of Kent. Princess Marina did not appreciate the preciousness and never wore it once. This injustice was rectified by Princess Alexandra, who looked stunning in diamond curls and an airy design. Princess Marina gifted the tiara to her niece on her wedding day. Catherine Worsley often wore it in the early years of her marriage, paired with massive earrings. Over time, the treasure disappeared, and members of the royal family stopped wearing it altogether. One might think it would fade into obscurity again, but the dukes did not have many impressive diadems to overlook such treasures. However, the Duchess of Kent acquired another tiara with similar elements. The resemblance is striking. The lower band consists of identical round and lozenge-shaped stones. Spikes and exquisite pearls were added to the former bandeau, enhancing its appearance significantly. Since then, the Duchess of Kent has regularly appeared in this tiara at social events. It's practically her only adornment that can be worn with diamond earrings and a pearl necklace, which she adores. I'd note that a jewel with transparent crystals and snow-white pearls is suitable for any occasion, which is perhaps why it became the Duchess's favourite. In 1992, Lady Helen Windsor, the only heir to Prince Edward and his wife Catherine, got married. The main ornament of her wedding attire was that very pearl tiara with a long history. The bride looked magnificent in a lavish veil, a snow-white dress and sea pearls, a more than successful ensemble. In recent years, 
The Duchess rarely socializes and hardly fulfills any duties as a member of the royal family. Her tiara hasn't been seen in society for a long time, but it surely awaits its next appearance in a snug box. I hope its next owner will indulge us more often with the brilliance of diamonds, as such treasures shouldn't languish idle.